Hi friends, welcome to my first tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own dataset from a folder containing data. The data directory consists of different folders with different names. These names are the labels. In our program, we have to import some libraries like OpenCV, NumBy, OS, and Render. The OpenCV is imported as import CV2. In our program, it's mainly used for resizing the image and read the image. NumBy is used for dealing with arrays, and the library OS is used for getting the directory and the subdirectory and the file name of the data. The library random is used for shuffle the data. Data means our trained data. Path is equal to train data. In the path, we have the train data. Next, we have to give the image size. Here, the image size is 96. Then, we have to create a function. For the function name is create train data. In this function, we are initializing a list. The name is train data and initialize a label is equal to 0 for directory path, directory name, and files in os.walk. The os.walk gives the exact values of directory path, directory names, and the file name. In the directory names, we can see the subdirectories inside the train data, and the file names contain all the files inside the folders. Now you can see all the files displayed in this terminal window. Now I am going to comment the file names so we can see the actual directory names so here we can see the directory path and gca those are the subdirectories the subdirectory path are train data slash g train data slash c and train data slash a now i am uncommenting the print file names so we can see all the file names and here we can see the file names are g c and a so the file name is not accessing. Just delete the break statement and let us see. After deleting the break statement, we can see a lot of files like 200.jpg, 481.jpg, 61.jpg, all the data up to 500.jpg because each subdirectory consists of 500 images and those images are shown in the terminal. And the for loop is used to iterate through all the subdirectories and and another for loop is used to iterate through all the files inside a subdirectory. Then we have to create the actual path of the files. So we use actual path is equal to slash directory name plus slash file. Through this, we can get all the file names. In the terminal, you can see all the file names. For reading each images, we use imread function and the parameters we use here is our actual path that point to a image file and cv2.imread grayscale. We are reading those files as grayscale because grayscale is a two-dimensional array. After that, we just print the image into the terminal. In the terminal, you can see some values as a list that is our first image values. We can see the read image using imshow function inside the OpenCV. So, in this, we are giving two parameters like imgb1 as a string and img, actual our image. I am putting this function inside a loop because I want to see the image. Otherwise, it will close immediately. So, I am using a while loop here. Then, if I press an escape button, the window will close. When we press the escape button, the first image will be closed and the next image will come. And also, you can see the values of the image in the terminal window. Next, we have to process the image for creating the data set. For processing, here we use resize function. The resize function resizes the image into the given values. Here, the given values are image size. Image size is 96. Next, we have to create the training data. The training data is a list. So, using the append function, we can add the image and the label into the training data. Here, 
training data dot append bracket mb dot array of image here we are converting the image into an mb array then with the label we are appending to the training data list after reading resizing and appending all the files inside a directory we have to increment the label so label is equal to label plus one then we will switch to the another subdirectory and the for loop will iterate through all the files inside the subdirectory here in the terminal you can see one because the label will increase to one after the completion of one subdirectory after processing the whole data let's print the training data here you can see the image and the label of the first directory let's delete the break and insert the shuffle function the shuffle function will shuffle data inside the training data because we have to shuffle all the data next we have to save the files as an mb array so nb.save we have to give a file name as train data dot mp comma the data training data then return the training data value from the function now we call the function as train data is equal to create train data brackets then print the training data and you can see those labels are shuffled after the execution of the program there will be a train data dot mb file will create and that's our output and that is our data set and this data set we can give to the neural network to train the data if you want to increase the number of classes you can just create more sub directories inside the train data and give the images here i am creating two other sub directories o and o and inside those sub directories there are the images of o and o after that just run the program we don't need to edit anything you can see here the labels will be 1 2 3 4 and 5 actually the exact values of the labels are 0 1 2 3 and 4 here the one value is increased because i am printing the value after the increment of the label after the execution of the program we will get the output as train data dot n by like this you can give n number of classes inside the train data directory you have to add the sub directories and add the images in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how to take the images for creating the data set and pre-process those data thanks for watching and see you on the next tutorial